So I talk about CRISPR fairly frequently, I think it's safe to say, and I feel like I, as of yet, have never really taken an opportunity to thoroughly explain what CRISPR is in great enough detail to do it justice. And so that's kind of what I'm hoping to do now, actually. Uh, as CRISPR is showing up in the mainstream news more and more frequently, I think there are benefits that would come with having a greater understanding of what precisely the technology is, where it originates from, and how we use it. So what actually is CRISPR? Well, it's an acronym. The same way that NASA is an acronym that stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, CRISPR is an acronym that stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. Now, that might sound like a whole bunch of science jargon words that mean nothing to you, but what CRISPR really stands for is a literal science description of the DNA that we're looking at. CRISPR, at its core, is actually a piece of bacterial DNA. So it's literally a piece of a bacterial chromosome that contains sequences of DNA that are short, and that are palindromic, meaning that they read the same way forwards and backwards. Now these short palindromes are regularly interspaced by what we call spacer DNA sequences, unique sequences that occur between each of the repeating sequences. Hence the name, clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. And so naturally, you might be wondering what a piece of a bacterial chromosome has anything to do with genome editing, but in order to understand how the CRISPR-Cas9 system work together to allow us to very cheaply edit a whole bunch of genes, we need to kind of understand where the research comes from and where it has gone. And so to start, we're going to need to build an understanding of what this CRISPR DNA is and how the natural functionality of the CRISPR-Cas system in bacteria is something that we as scientists were able to manipulate and use as a new tool for editing genes however we see fit. Basically, the CRISPR array on a bacterial chromosome functions like a microbial immune system. Scientists learned that the spacer DNA that was occurring between all of these palindromic repeats was actually like a virus library. They were these short little trunks of DNA that was being extracted from viruses and incorporated into the bacterial genome. And then, upstream of the CRISPR array, we have what we refer to as the CAS genes. CAS being CRISPR associated. And the CRISPR associated genes contain a genetic code that results in the production of a series of proteins that work in tandem with the CRISPR array sequences of DNA to protect the bacteria from invading viral attacks. This happens in a three-step process of bacterial defense. First, the bacteria is going to need to acquire the viral DNA. So, when a bacteria is first exposed to a virus and viral DNA enters the host cell, some of the CAS genes code for endonuclease proteins that can truncate or cut up the viral DNA, and some of that viral DNA can actually be inserted into the host genome as one of these unique spacer sequences. Now, once this small little piece of viral DNA has been inserted into the bacterial CRISPR array, it acts as a sort of memory bank. It allows the bacteria to have a piece of that DNA to recognize the virus if it were ever to be exposed to that virus again. Now, you might be familiar with a similar concept in mammalian species like us because we develop antibodies to different viral attacks. When we get exposed to a certain virus, our bodies produce antibodies to neutralize the virus and protect us from attacks. On the microbial level in bacteria that lack the ability to have a full functioning immune system, this CRISPR array functions as a little tiny microscopic immune system. Step two is going to be the expression of the CRISPR array. Once that viral DNA is integrated as one of these spacer sequences between the palindromic repeats of a bacterial CRISPR array, the bacteria can then transcribe the entire CRISPR array and form what we call a pre-CRISPR RNA strand. Now, that really long strand of pre-CRISPR RNA is going to have to be processed, and this is where the short palindrome sequences come into play. The CRISPR-associated, or CAS genes, produce some proteins that are designed specifically to recognize those palindromic repeats as cleavage sites. 
these endonuclease proteins can target those repeating segments of the pre-CRISPR RNA, and when they see it, they will bind to that strand of pre-CRISPR RNA and create a cut. So these endonuclease proteins are literally targeted to chop up the pre-CRISPR RNA at all of the palindromic repeats, and doing that is going to make a whole bunch of strands of CRISPR RNA, each one containing a unique spacer DNA sequence. And this is going to bring us to step three, interference. The processed CRISPR RNA is now going to consist of a bunch of individualized CRISPR RNA strands, each one with a unique spacer sequence. Now recall that these spacer sequences are actually the stored memory banks of viral DNA that has been converted into the CRISPR RNA, which means that these spacer sequences are going to match up perfectly to these specific viruses from which they originated. So at this point, the CRISPR-associated genes, or CAS genes, are going to produce even more CAS endonuclease proteins, and these CAS endonuclease proteins are actually going to combine with the CRISPR RNA sequence, forming a CRISPR ribonucleoprotein complex. A big fancy science word for saying a protein that is also mixed with a little bit of CRISPR RNA. And the CRISPR RNA sequence containing that spacer sequence is actually going to carry the endonuclease protein to the matching sequence of viral DNA. So you might be starting to follow the logic train here. If a virus is attacking the cell, and the cell has already been exposed to that virus before, the CRISPR RNA sequence will exist in the bacterial genome. That CRISPR RNA sequence is going to bind to a Cas protein and carry that Cas protein to the viral DNA that's infecting the host, and then the Cas protein can cut up and destroy the viral DNA, preventing an infection. Now this CRISPR system of bacterial chromosomes that contains spacer DNA sequences and Cas proteins that can work together to target and degrade viral DNA has been known about for some time. Certainly a while before the CRISPR-Cas9 phenomenon blew up for this new crazy genome editing technique. So to understand how we are going from this microbial makeshift immune system inside of bacteria to a powerful cheap genome editing technique, we're going to need to focus specifically on the Doudna's lab discovery of the Cas9 protein in Streptococcus pyogenes and how that specific Cas protein was ideally suited for this genome engineering tool. But that is going to be a lesson for another day. So thank you for watching, I hope you stay tuned for that, and stay inquisitive.